All right, let's go back to the automobile exception, and you were going into now containers inside the car to include locked items and safes and all that jazz, correct? Yes. So um, this is an area of, of automobile exception jurisprudence that's changed over the years. Uh, change for the better, I guess, if you're a police officer. Uh, change for the worst if you're interested in privacy protections inside your vehicle. Uh, but as a rule, criminal. As a criminal, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the rule now is pretty straightforward. Uh, it started with the United States versus Ross, then Acevedo, and then Houghton kind of just kind of cleaned up around the edges. Um, but if it's a container, it's first of all, if you've got probable cause to search the car under the automobile exception or probable cause in general, but it's probably going to be the automobile exception. Uh, and the container that you're thinking about searching could reasonably house the item that you're looking for. If I'm looking for drugs and it's a purse, drugs could easily be in a purse. Then you can search the item. I don't have to have a particular reason why I think it's in that container. I just have to have probable cause to search the car and the item that I'm looking for could fit in the place that I'm looking. Uh, Ross, in any case since Ross, has never made a distinction between locked or unlocked. Uh, Ross said all containers. Uh, If you've got PC to search the car, it includes all containers. So to me, all containers includes locked containers. Right. So I'm going to just jump in here and ask a few questions. Um, Would you be, let's say you come across a parked vehicle or maybe a vehicle where the person has decided they're going to discard the keys or hide the keys from you or refuse to cooperate and lock the car door. Would you find it, Benny, uh, let's, let's start with this, just the car itself. Would it be a violation of the Fourth Amendment with your already authorized probable cause to search it? To maybe take out a lockout kit and unlock the doors to go inside of it. No, so I so the manner that's a good question. The manner in which it, so first of all, you have probable cause to do a search for evidence, right? Um, the and so that's the first step, but also the manner in which we conduct the search also must be reasonable. So step one, I don't think would be getting the baton out and smashing the window. Step one would be something to the uh, akin to what you just mentioned, getting a lockout kit, something that's not going to damage the property. It's not likely to damage. Maybe look for the keys. Uh, maybe ask to have them unlock the car. But ultimately, ultimately, it may come to the point where we would need to break and uh, break into the car using a degree of, of force. Um, and that would be reasonable. But I think we would probably want to exhaust the less destructive beans before we resort to damaging the vehicle. But no, I have the authority to search the car one way or another. We're going to be getting in that car. People have asked me, what do I do in a situation where and, you know, I, I remind people in a motor vehicle setting when you're dealing with people who are involved in criminal activity. You're going to come across locked. You're going to get this one a lot. Oh, the trunk doesn't open. Oh, I bet it doesn't, right? You know, like that's 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 my theory. The trunk doesn't open. Oh, it doesn't? Well, we're going to figure it out. Um, you'll have people with locked glove compartments and locked center consoles. If you're encountering locked glove compartments, locked center consoles, you have low level. But, you know, you are, and people say, well, how do I access it if I don't have keys or they're refusing to open it? What I say is it's the least intrusive means that you can possibly come up with. And it may be something like taking a screwdriver, uh, putting it in a crevice, prying it back a little bit, trying not to break it and shining a flashlight and to clear that anomaly or that place that you can't see. And that should do this. And, and listen, by the way, if you see what you're looking for in there, you see a handgun that's illegal or some kind of narcotics, you're going to be able to now access and use more force to retrieve it. Yes. Yeah, I have no issue. I don't see any legal issues with that, you know, and hopefully yeah. you're Hopefully you have good agency policies that cover these things. One of the other things that I, I, I work a lot on is policy development, um, risk management issues, and, and your agencies need to have good written policies. That oh, they don't. And they, and they don't. Yeah, it's, really it's horrendous. Far between. But these are the kinds of questions that policies um, should, should answer. Um, so we don't have to, you know, resort to asking our buddy or, you know, asking the guy, working next to me who probably has no idea either we're just guessing mm-hmm. the the guessing we need to take take the guessing out of a lot of the things that we do uh, and we can start with good policy and then follow that with good training so